A traumatic childhood, deep-seated addiction to food, and the refusal to take responsibility for any of her actions. This is the story of Joyce, the rudest woman in my 600-pound life, season eight. When I wake up in the morning, my first thoughts are a combination of disgust at how my life is now and shock that I was even able to make it to another day. So I question why God even wakes me up. Joyce Del Vescovo is a 44-year-old woman from Gardner, Kansas, and she seems to think that at 759 pounds, her weight is too far gone to ever be normal. Dawn lives with me and takes care of me, and without her, things would be even worse because I can't even get out of bed on my own. That's how bad off my body is now. And then once I'm up, I'm barely even able to go a few feet at one time. My weight's too much for me to move around. Because her body just can't handle all those pounds, Joyce has to rely on a friend to come over and take care of her every single day. Once she does that, I have to move back on the potty to clean my backside and other areas that get easily infected if we ignore them. <clears throat> okay. And after that, we move to the last location. And we finish the upper half of my body and my legs sitting in the recliner with like sponge washing. But the entire bathing process can take close to an hour. At this point, all the help she needs is becoming increasingly embarrassing for Joyce. I get so excited that I finally get to eat. It's the moment I've been looking forward to since I finished my last meal the night before. That first bite is the best moment of my day. When I'm eating, I think nothing. That's what the best part of it is. Is when I'm sitting there eating, I have no worries about anything. I'm just thinking about how good the food is. But at the end of it all, she knows that she's going to be rewarded with the thing she loves the most, food. And that's my life. I'll sit there in my recliner for the rest of the day and Don will bring me food and I'll eat it until it's time to go back to bed. I basically just live to eat now and I never leave this room. The only thing I can really think of is if somehow I could change my past, but there's no way I can do that. As you can probably tell, Joyce's meals are anything but healthy. Not only is she eating a serving that's fit for about three people, but she's also filling herself up with oily, greasy, and cheesy fast food first thing in the morning. But all of this didn't happen overnight. Joyce had a pretty rough childhood, and that's when she started spiraling out of control. My parents got divorced like when I was around three, and my father was not present in my life after they divorced. So I was mostly just with my mother. But things changed when I was seven, because that's when my mom started dating someone who would become my stepdad. But when they decided to get married, my mom moved in with them, but sent me to live with my grandma. I felt abandoned by my mom, like she didn't want me anymore. After being abandoned by her mom, Joyce turned to food to deal with her complicated emotions as a young child. So I was in this new place with a new family, and I couldn't have the one thing that could come for me and help me feel better. So I was really upset with my mom, and for the next few years, it seemed like we were fighting constantly. Thankfully, when I was 12, my mom and stepdad got a divorce, and we moved out. And I was so relieved to be out of that home and just with my mom. But in this case, there definitely was too much of a good thing. But no one cared enough to help Joyce control her eating habits. And so at 16, that's when the weight started piling on me. But my mom could eventually tell what I was doing, and when she figured it out, she was really upset, and she tried to get me to stop eating. Her goal became to get me away from working at a fast food place. Seeing her mom's reaction to her weight, Joyce started feeling even worse about herself. Joyce's relationship with food never seemed to get any better, and when she was 16, she went ahead and got a job at a fast food place where she had unlimited access to the unhealthy food that she loved to eat. When I was 21, I started seeing someone. And when things started to get serious between us, I started having these nightmares with me and an event that happened with one of my stepbrothers. When I was eight, my mom and stepdad left my stepbrother to babysit me. I went to sleep and I woke up with him sitting on my bed and he was rubbing my back. And that is the initial memory that I had for years upon years upon years. At that point, I didn't know if they were just dreams or if I was really piecing it together myself or what happened because it's all just so distorted. At the time when all these repressed memories had come back, I just tried to move past it and get on with my life. Of course, this took a huge toll on Joyce's health at a very young age, and her fears were at their worst when she started seeing someone new. And around that time is when my father passed away. He had a heart attack at 44 because of his weight. And I knew I would end up like him if I didn't change. I was in my mid-30s when I'd gotten up to around 550. And my weight was getting to a point where it was hard for me to get around like I needed. And then a few years later, I started developing a really bad lymphedema on my lower body. And that combined with my weight, caused me to be bedridden when I was 38. But it seems like life just threw one curveball at Joyce after the other. I know my family and Dawn are all worried about me too. 
and they don't think I'm gonna make it much longer. But just like me, they keep doing what they've been doing and help me eat the stuff I'm not supposed to have now. Sometimes when I see Joyce eating large amounts of food, I'm livid, I'm just livid. But I'm really always really fearful. I live in a lot of fear, because I just, I just. I think Joyce is at the point now where she knows she really does have to do something. Joyce can't go on much longer like this. It's gonna kill her. Considering her father's situation, Joyce knows that she needs to take care of herself if she doesn't want to meet the same fate. But will she be able to take on the challenge? Or will she let food slowly kill her? But once that plate is in front of her, Joyce can't think of anything else. I called Dr. Now in Houston to try to get help with my weight before it's too late. I called all the local doctors and none of them are even willing to try and help me. So going all the way to Texas is my only option. And I'm terrified about it because this isn't going to be easy at all. But there's no way for me to come back or make the trip again. So the way I figure it, this is a one-way trip for me. So that makes this even scarier. She knows that it's now or never. If she doesn't step up now, she never will. But despite trying her luck with every doctor in town, Joyce realizes that her condition is too extreme to be handled by just about anyone. Doing this is a huge act of faith and trust. But it's my last hope and option. And I either do this or die soon. So I'm confident about this choice, but I still feel really scared. I mean, what am I? This is like kind of like the end, you know? If I don't do this, then it's just kind of waiting until my body gives out and I'm not here, so it's worth the risk to me. Which means that she needs to move all the way to Houston so she can get regular treatment, and that's not gonna be easy for someone as big as her. And then I'm really worried that they're gonna have a hard time getting me in the transport. And I just have to trust this is gonna be worth it. You need help getting up? Oh, no. <laughs> you did pretty good. But not only does the stress of it all take a toll on Joyce's physical health, it also starts affecting her mentally. This is so much scarier than I was even imagining. And I'm just terrified that this isn't gonna work and something's gonna go wrong. <laughs> Am I here? I want you to hold her hand. Uh, uh, it's okay. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, that was just your curve. She's dreading this trip already, and it hasn't even started yet. This is horrible. Dawn was supposed to stay behind us to help me if I needed, and she's not. So I'm really, really scared right now because I don't know how I'm gonna handle this and do what I need to be able to make it to Houston. It's just too much for me, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it. Thankfully though, the medical team is safely able to transport her to the vehicle and then it's time for them to leave for Houston. As time goes on though, Joyce starts losing her mind at every little thing, but she needs tougher skin if she's gonna make it to her final destination. Hi Joyce. Hi Dr. Now. Uh, how you doing? I'm in a lot of pain. All right, uh, we're gonna get you in real quick and check you out, okay? Okay, thank you. Joyce's condition looks to already be severely deteriorated and she likely doesn't have much time before things get even worse for her. A few hours later, she's safely there. And the first person she meets is Dr. Now himself, who lets her know that he's going to take care of the severe pain that she's reporting. All right, now that we got you inside, you feeling okay? Feeling much better now. Do you have any pain anywhere? Just a little bit, like residual pain from being in pain for so long. We'll get you feeling better real soon. Okay. Thank you. All right, and then um, no shortness of breath? A little bit, yeah. After Joyce is taken inside, the doctor immediately comes to check up on her. Hopefully, once we run the test we need on Joyce, we are able to determine that there is no immediate life-threatening issue with her because with her current condition, it is not likely that she will survive any serious medical issues right now. So we will need to do PT with her to get her stamina up and strengthen her pulmonary system to keep it from getting any worse. And we will likely need to keep her here for a while. Thankfully, everything's okay for now. But the doctor knows that if Joyce doesn't act soon, she's going to cause irreversible damage to her health. You feel any better, Joyce? Much better. Yeah. Okay, good. But do you know how much you weigh now? Okay, Joyce, now that we got you situated, let's see what the weight is. Looks like you are 758. All right, Joyce, so it looks like we have a lot of weight to lose with you. After Joyce starts to feel better, it's time for the doctor to check her weight, and he's not happy with the numbers. I'm in so much pain, and all I can do right now is rest. 
but I'm hoping once I recover, all my tests will be good and I'll be able to start my whole journey to getting healthy and a new life because I've waited a long time for a chance like this and I'm very ready for it. Thankfully, Dr. Now has a plan laid out for her, but the big question is, will Joy stick to it? Her test showed her body was starting to struggle a great deal just to function. So it's been extremely important for us to get her weight down as quickly as possible. So we have had her on a controlled diet that she hasn't liked too much. And we have been working to do PT with her. It's now been a month since Joyce was first taken to the medical center and under the doctor's supervision. She's improved a bit. But overall, Joyce has refused to comply with most of the doctor's orders. We're getting you to lose weight and address that. But you have to cooperate with us to do your exercises so we can make the same progress with your stamina that we have made with your weight. I really am trying, doctor, now. And just like everything else, she has an excuse for her behavior. We okay? Okay, good job. You're doing good. Keep walking. This much activity is really hard on my body. And I don't think Dr. Now understands that and just how much this is for me. But I don't know if I can do a whole lot more because this is really painful and I feel like I'm about at my limit. But the doctor keeps it real with her. She needs to try harder. 388. I can't be right. I gotta sit back down, sorry. I'm almost falling. All right, we got you. Okay. Uh, 388 was not right. <laughs> That'd have been a miraculous loss. So this is a matter of life and death for you, and you're running out of time. Yeah. Probably means I'm staying here a lot longer. After all this time in the center, Joyce's body is still pretty much immobile, and she hasn't lost a considerable amount of weight at all. So far, Joyce hasn't shown me much evidence that she's willing to do what she needs to turn her situation around. And until I start to see some change with that, it is too dangerous to send her to be back on her own because she can't afford to undo the progress we have made. And that concerns doctor now to no end. For your height, you should be uh, under 100 pounds. <laughs> so you still have 500 pounds to lose before you hit your goal. And that's not gonna be easy to do. But if you do what you need, then we'll be able to get you to that point, okay? At this point, he's wondering, does she even want to change? But when the doctor gives Joyce a much needed reality check, it seems to fly right over her head. She just wants to go home, thinking that she'll stick to the doctor's routine all on her own. But we all know that's never going to happen. I'm really excited about today because Dr. Nass said I could finally leave and go to the new apartment Don set up for us. And I'm looking forward to that and being in a normal place again. It's month three, and Joyce is finally going home. But she still isn't walking on her own, and she still convinced herself she needs her oxygen tank to breathe when there is no reason for it. So we still have a lot of work to do with her. And now this one, we have her down to 553 for total weight loss of 205 pounds in two months. And she's happier than ever. But the doctor is worried that Joyce might slip back into her old ways. Dr. Now sends over PT three times a week, and that's been hard. But I have another session today, so we'll just have to see how it goes. Dr. Now has been wanting me to stop using my oxygen because he thinks I don't need it. I've been working really hard to do what I can and make progress with my ability to do more. I know it's not as much as PT and Dr. Now wants, but I really am pushing myself to do as much as I can. And for the first few weeks, it really looks like she's making progress. I've been working really hard the past month, but I'm still struggling to get up and walk. I've done PT every time they come over, and I've completely stuck to the 1200 calorie a day diet. The only thing I can figure is that maybe for my body, I can't lose weight on 1200 calories. But despite all of that, it's the fifth month of Joyce's journey. She hasn't lost any weight, and the physiotherapy seems to have gone nowhere either. So what's going on for you to miss your appointment? Um, I've had some transportation issues, as you know. I am still following the calories, but I think I'm going to have to take in a lot less calories than 1,200 to make any difference. No bad, low carb. By now, you should have lost something, but that's clearly not the case because you look like you have gained. No, that's not true. I have lost weight because I can feel it in a lot of ways. You know, my clothes fit better, and it's easier for me to sit up than it was when I left the hospital. So um, George, you're delusional if you believe that. While she claims that she's sticking to the diet the doctor prescribed, the results show the exact opposite. What's worse is that she's also been missing her appointments with the doctor, and he's had enough. I can see you right now, and I can tell you have gained. 
The only question is how much, and that's why it's important we see you immediately. Because if you undo the progress we made with you, your situation is going to get much worse very soon. While Joyce claims that she's losing weight and doing well, Dr. Now just doesn't buy it, and for good reason. I just, I know that I have to less than 1,200 calories is too much for me. You keep saying that, but you're eating five times that, and you either don't realize that or think you can convince me of the delusion you want. No. But I'm telling you right now, unless you quit the program, we'll find out where your weight is at when you get here, and we'll see. Okay? Okay. I'm going to work my hardest at getting to be at the clinic with transportation as soon as I can. I've, I'm going to work very hard. Well, you have two days. I think that's a little unfair but I'll do my best. Good. And that's when he gives her an ultimatum. The doctor wants Joyce to come to the center, no excuses, in 48 hours. But of course, Joyce isn't going to go down without a fight. I don't think Dr. Now is being fair because whether he believes me or not, I know I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. I can't help that the results don't show that. It's the program that's failing, not me. After the conversation with Dr. Now, Joyce completely victimizes herself, painting the doctor as the bad guy and blaming his program for not working. But that's just not true. Thankfully, she's finally ready to go see the doctor. But as always, Joyce wants to give up without even trying. Okay. I can't handle that hump on the scooter. I have to walk in with the walker. Do you need okay, a walker? walker? Yeah, but have the wheelchair ready. This is taking so much out of me. I wish Dr. Now would just listen to me and see the fact I can't walk yet isn't my fault. And so having to do this is abusive and not right. And after getting to the medical center, she immediately starts complaining of all the pain she's in. I don't even know if I have anything left to get on the scale. I'll do my best. I'm just completely and utterly physically exhausted. <laughs> that can't be right. There's no way that's right because I'm working so hard. And when it's finally time for the weighing scales to reveal the truth, Joyce completely breaks down when she sees that she's actually gained 58 pounds instead of losing any. Well, uh, you know, if you stop convincing yourself you can't get up and giving excuses not to do any activity, you would be able to get around easier. But the bigger problem right now is that in the past six weeks, you put back on almost 60 pounds. You wanna tell me why that is? Um, I've been doing everything I'm supposed to. And then actually with the eating habits, I've been doing really, really well. So I don't know other than the fact that I'm putting on water. But with her waiting habits, she must have known this was happening. And that's what the doctor tells her too. The car ride was too much for me and I think I need to go to the hospital. I mean, I just don't, I don't have the ability to walk. Like I'm very dizzy and I think I'm having a heart attack. <sighs> you don't look like you are. <sighs> Now you do. You want to go into the hospital? <clears throat> Joyce's mom watches in pain as her daughter continues to argue with the doctor, refusing to accept any responsibility and exaggerating her condition for sympathy. There is no real positive outcome to this situation because either she's suffering a medical emergency where her body will start giving out and there will be likely nothing we can do to help her or we will determine there is nothing wrong. And she's making all this up to get out of this situation and get a medical transport home. But the doctor lets her do whatever she wants to at this point because he knows nothing's going to work with Joyce. So you're not having a heart attack or dying. Okay, well, I'm very relieved. Well, I think you already knew everything was fine, but it's only a matter of time before your body actually gives out. Surprise, surprise, Joyce is perfectly okay and not having a heart attack like she said, and the doctor isn't having any of it. Hopefully psychotherapy will be able to get through to Joyce to where she starts doing what she needs because she can't go on much longer like this. I feel like Dr. Now has been a little too harsh, but I'm just really relieved to be okay and that there's nothing really bad happening with my body. But right now, I just want to get home and recover from this and then keep trying to do what I need. Still, the doctor agrees to keep helping her as long as she shows him that she really is willing to make an effort this time around. Today, I'm headed to therapy, but I'm only going because Dr. Now made it a requirement. So this is a bit of a waste of time, but Dr. Now has made it a requirement of his program. Soon enough, Joyce is forced to go to therapy, but she's going into it with a negative attitude. And so with that being said, what I would really like to see happen is that I'd like to have yourself and your mom come back and see me for a family session. Okay. So that we can just talk about ways to support one another and ways to continue healing this relationship. 
At therapy, Joyce confronts her trauma and her unhealthy relationship with food along with her mom's role in all of this. After my therapy appointment with Lola, I realized that I'm not gonna be able to truly turn my life around until I deal with things with my mom. But so far, I've been too scared to ask my mom to go to therapy with me. Okay, I'll bring you the peppers and stuff so you can start cutting them. Okay. Dr. Now still has PT coming three times a week, and I'm working hard with the exercises they give me. So I'm excited about that. Slowly but surely, Joyce starts doing better for herself. After the last therapy appointment I did with my mom, I was a little disappointed because I chickened out about the pain she caused me. And I've tried to work up the courage to find a way in time to talk to her about it. Doctor Now told me that my last official weigh-in was 611, but I still think there was a malfunction with the scale and that I actually weigh a lot less. But sadly, even that's not enough because the actual results are still not showing. Soon enough, it's time for her to go back to the doctor again. I'm hoping I might actually even hit the 150 pound goal Doctor Now gave me. There's just no way. It just doesn't make sense. And the weighing scale shows that Joyce has gained 12 more pounds, which obviously means that the doctor will not be happy. So things don't look good at all. And I'm not interested in any more excuses or games from you. So we will keep sending PT to you and pro at psychotherapy. But other than that, if you don't start losing and hit these goals, then at this point you're on your own. So at this point, it's clear you don't really want to do this. You, I just don't think you understand how hard this has been for me and that I've been working really, really hard at it. And I put effort in every single day. The doctor is pretty honest with Joyce, letting her know that he can't help her if she doesn't want to be helped. And as always, Joyce just wants to run away from her problems. But I'm still not able to walk as much as doctor now wants or get in a taxi or a regular vehicle. And he still won't send me a medical transport. And the three month deadline he gave me to come back with the progress he wanted was today. Does that door open up any wider? No, that's as far as it goes. And I'm willing to go back and do that. But I can't if Dr. Now isn't going to help me get there. But I'm not giving up on myself. I plan to keep working as hard as I can and to continue pushing myself. She eventually decides to quit the program, blaming her lack of progress on the doctor's plans. That's a wrap for Joyce's story on My 600 Pound Life. All of her struggles only prove that if you really want something, you need to put in the effort. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into the incredible stories of transformation on My 600 Pound Life. Your support is what keeps us going. Until next time, bye.